Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I won't lie to you, I am using this video as an excuse to wish you a Happy New Year. I wish you all the best in 2024. Now that being said, I do want to show you something that's of interest. And what I'd like to show is something that kind of comes up perennially in uh, Pix and Sight forums. People use star exterminator or other means to create starless images and then they look at those star only images often in their linear form and they're very surprised by what they find so in this video I'd like to just highlight what that is all about and how not to freak out when you see those results please subscribe to my channel and comment down below about what you think about the video again happy new year this should be a good one Now, ever since Star Exterminator became available, this issue of interpreting what extracted stars looks like and how to use them has been an issue. Let me just kind of justify that. Over the past few days, I've seen many examples like this posted on various forums. This particular one says, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm in the process of learning how to take stars out. I run Star Exterminator and get this image that you see on the screen. Here's another one. This happens over and over. People post these images of these crazy looking extracted star fields. What's going on? Well, the cool thing about the understanding of what's going on really dives into much of an understanding of images, of the screen stretch, of what permanent stretches are all about. These topics, of course, I cover in great detail on my site at Adam Block Studios. There are many videos that talk about them, and it's a large... Um, kind of topic. It's not just a single thing that this is about. This is about multiple things in Pix Insight. So I'm going to summarize it here, though, very quickly. Here is an image. It's a, a color image of a beautiful field of dust and nebulosity. Now, the dust and nebulosity is not apparent in this image. So what do you do? Well, you remove the stars, and then, of course, you're going to manipulate the image as far as the nebulosity is concerned, making it brighter. And then you'll blend the stars back in, in some reasonable way that things look good. So what's the problem there? Well, no, no problem really. Here's how you go about doing it. Here is Star Exterminator. This image is the linear image. It is that point that I've finally created an RGB image. I've color corrected it and all of that. But that's all that's happened here. There is, although it's hard to see here, there's nebulosity actually filling this field. Every single part of this field has some dust in it. So we'll remove the stars by applying Star Exterminator in the normal way that you would. All right, and so here we have the result. I have an image that has stars. Again, this is a linear image. It's a color image, but it's a linear image. And I also have a linear image of the nebulosity that's in the field. Cool, right? Isn't that neat? Um, this linear image, however, of the stars and the nebula is a very special display of this information. Because what we're looking at here is the automatic screen stretch that's being applied to this linear image. So the screen transfer function that we're looking at here, especially when, where I started with this image here, is just the auto STF. In fact, there's the auto STF. It's actually a little bit brighter. So I had adjusted this and then I had removed the stars. This image is also then the same stretch, the same automatic screen transfer function that was applied to the original image before we extracted the stars is being applied to this star field. Now you gotta think about what that means because this image now with just stars is very, very different than what the original image was. The original image has a background. And the key point to understand is the way that the automatic screen stretch function works with this process is that it calculates how to stretch the image based on the background. If you change the background, you'll change the resulting stretch. So 
It is certainly very possible that I can stretch the image like this, remove the stars, and have the stars look exactly the same as they did originally. That's because it understands that whatever that screen stretch was, it applies it to this image here. But here's the problem. If I do an automatic new screen stretch to this stars only image, what do I get? I turn it off, I get this. If I do a new stretch, I get this. And this new stretch looks bizarre, right? Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, some of the other images that I just showed you, they look even more bizarre. It depends on how noisy the image and how good the extraction of the stars is. But the most important point here is that the background is very nearly zero. It's probably zero in many, many places because all the background information exists in the other image. This is just supposed to be the stars. And if the screen transfer function is calculating how to stretch the image based on a background which is basically zero, it's going to affect it. And in this case, it'll always overstretch. The darker the background, basically the greater the stretch. Because the stretch on the screen is trying to show you the dimmest things in the, in the picture. If the dimmest things are a value of zero, that's going to be basically maximally stretched, right? So what does this all mean? Well, what this means is there's now a workflow for the information that you want to take into account. Let me just take a step back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, remember our original stretch here? I'm just going to go ahead and apply it back to the star image here. Well, this doesn't look the same, right? Again, it's linear, but you have to understand that there really is no background in the star image. So what I need to do is, of course, I need to take this and bring it all the way back here. So that's zero. And now basically we have, you know, a matching uh, extraction of what the stars look like. So that's the idea behind the, uh, the linear stretch here. And so in terms of a workflow, here's what I would suggest that people do. What you're going to want to do is when you extract your stars, you're going to have your uh, starless image that looks like this. So that's the nebula. And then you're going to get this. And my suggestion is don't touch it. Or if you do touch it, you know, just put it back to that auto stretched version as I just demonstrated so that you have a starting point because that's basically what it looked like uh, when you had extracted it at the same degree, the same level that the picture with the nebulosity, how it looked when it was auto stretched. So let's say then as a workflow, what you're going to do is you're going to manipulate this nebula image in whatever way that you're going to do it. And at the end of the day, you're going to stretch the image using histogram transformation. You'll take whatever your adjustments are, and then you'll have some screen stretch that you're working with. You're going to permanently stretch it like this, and then you apply that stretch over here. That is, of course, going to permanently stretch the image. Now, in the case that, and then I need a reset to show you, uh, in the case that I was working on this data, the actual result looks uh, something like this. This is what I ended up with when I did my manipulation and I made it a permanently stretched image. But remember, these stars are still in their linear form, but they're being displayed at this level. So what do I want to do? Well, what I want to do is I'm going to manipulate this image in such a way that the stars look good. And this is a good starting point from the automatic screen stretch. So all I'm going to do is maybe take the mid-tone slider and just go down a little bit, right? I just back off on the brightness so that it doesn't need to be the original brightness. I can do a lesser amount. That is synonymous with one of the methods that you'll find in Bill Blanchon's uh, method of star reduction. It's the same thing. All you're doing is you're manipulating the mid-tones transfer function, making the stars less bright and by uh, the same kind of means, making them look a little, a little bit smaller. And then uh, you will screen the two together, but you need to first permanently stretch this image because in order to screen two images together, they both need to be permanently stretched. So once you have decided what level you want these stars to appear, you're going to permanently stretch this image here, like that. Now this is, of course, getting that uh, stretch. So I'm going to, uh, the, 
the screen transfer function, so I'm going to reset it. And now I have two permanently stretched images. These two images we can screen together and make the final result. Now I'll go ahead and do it. This is not, these are not the settings I used, but I'll just go ahead and do it in case, you know, you haven't seen it. There are a number of ways of, of you know, going ahead uh, to do this. Pixel math is probably the way that most people will uh, want to do this. Hang on, I got my thing in the way here. So you go to pixel math and then you can use combine. And what do I have here? I have uh, image 19, so image 19 comma image 19 underscore stars. And the method we can use is uh, screen like that. Uh, sorry about that, I made a mistake. Uh, I did that to this thing. This is not the stretched version, uh, ignore that. I need to do this to the uh, stretched image here. I goofed up. So this needs to be unknown north because this is the stretched version where I actually spent time to make the nebula look good. Now if I do that, ta-da, I get my stars, I get my nebulosity, I get everything I want just how I wanted it. So that should give you the insight that uh, hopefully will prevent some of that confusion. You need to appreciate that when you extract the stars and you have a linear image, the extracted image, it's going to have the auto STF version of those stars. And if you reset the STF, you get the craziness because you're going to get a redisplayed version of that. But that's okay. All you need to do is just go back to your original, you know, the, the image that you um, extracted the stars from when you had its calculated STF. You can just apply that to your star image to get back to that same level if you want, or you can just manually adjust with uh, just the screen transfer process to get back to that same level. So it's fine, but uh, don't be freaked out when you see an image that has that calculated result because of the zero background and it just looks overly bright. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Let me just add that this also explains another issue that sometimes people have. It is that they don't actually stretch the star image. So if I take a step back here, and I do the combine, and let me take a step back here, do the combine, you'll get an image that looks like that, and people are very, they don't understand why the stars look so small or they look so strange when blended in the image. It's because you're blending a linear version of those stars, which are basically just the brightest ones will be visible, with your highly, highly stretched image. So that explains the other error that uh, often comes up when manipulating the stars and the starless image. Now at the end of the day, this is what I actually ended up with in terms of the image. Uh, so you can see that I went a little bit even less on the stars so that that nebulosity would show up, but I made sure to increase the color saturation of the stars a little bit, and uh, obviously I went absolutely as bright as I possibly could when it came to the nebulosity. This particular field, has no famous thing in it. There's nothing in this field that you can point to and say that nebula has a name or a catalog. It's literally just a piece of, a patch of sky in Camelopardalus. It's pretty cool. There is a galaxy here that's somewhat famous. It's NGC 1569, but that's it. So by processing images in this way, very, very deep exposures of a dark sky shows lots of nebulosity in the background and you do this processing of the nebula with the stars independently and then bring them together nicely, as I've demonstrated, you can get results that look like this. I would, of course, encourage you to consider uh, my website as a good source of information for doing exactly this kind of thing. I show step by step in every single exquisite detail how to go about making these kinds of images. And I do have uh, a couple of examples that are very, very similar to something like this. So find me at adamblockstudios.com, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, Happy New Year, and uh, good luck.